What's up guys, it's Quicksilver here. I thought I would do a little tutorial here today on my uh, sorting system that I just finished building in my uh, Let's Play world. Um, I think I did a pretty decent job of showing you guys how to build this in my world, but uh, I thought uh, there were a couple things I wanted to go over, and I thought I would uh, try and do a little more thorough of a job uh, explaining it all to you. Um, it's pretty simple in premise. Basically anything that I put into this chest I can then program the sorting system behind this wall to go ahead and dump out into uh, either of these two. Well, this I've only built one because it is a modular system. Whatever I want will get dumped into this chest, and then I have this one set up to be kind of my miscellaneous catch-all dumping chest. Uh, it is modular, meaning that this little strip right here, I can build in as many of these as I want to sort every single item in the game if you should so choose. Um, but I thought I'd go ahead and explain some of it, uh, some of it to you on the back end of this thing. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show it to you, and then I'm going to try and show you how to build this uh, layer by layer. It looks a lot more complicated than it actually is. It's really a pretty simple little build. But um, just to kind of go into it, there, there are really, I guess, uh, there's two sections to this. There's the actual sorting system, which is uh, really from this row to the left, and then there's the input chest so um, if you don't want to do you know the little input chest thing here what you could do in theory is you could just have a hopper or you could throw a half slab on top of this hopper if this system is underneath your floor and then anything you would throw on that half slab would get sucked down through it and right into this so this section to the left is optional and just so you know the stuff over here is just another way to build this uh, which I kind of mentioned in my um, my let's play world but I wanted that's this is actually the real reason that I'm doing this because it's a little more complicated than this little simple system so um, anyway just to kind of explain how this thing works uh, what we have here is we have a hopper chain up at the top and basically the only purpose of this is to move your items down the line the second row of hoppers is where we actually program what we want to place into that chest and the way we were in and, and well I'll keep going down the hopper line then the bottom hoppers here are actually just feeding whatever your item is into the chest if it makes it down that far uh, below that we have a redstone torch which is currently on that locks this so that it cannot accept any items from above um, but it's going to be powered off depending on how it works so what we're doing the way the system actually works is we're taking advantage of the fact that these um, comparators actually will put out a different length signal. Like for example, if this were a redstone torch and we threw a repeater here, we could then throw down, you know, 15 lines of redstone and they would all light up. However, if we have a comparator in here and we throw down, you know, I've never actually done this like that. I guess that just is going to work like a repeater. If we have a comparator there though and we throw in, let's say, a chest, we can actually read a signal out of that chest depending on what's in there and we'll only get one little dot of redstone power. The more items we throw in this chest, the stronger the signal, and the further the uh, the further that uh, it's gonna make a liar out of me. It's not behaving like I want it to. <laughs> okay, well maybe that's not gonna play <laughs> play nice on this. Let me throw. Let me try it with a uh, hopper. Actually, we'll probably get a better signal out of that. Yeah. See, so if we have more items in here, then our redstone signal actually gets longer, and we can use that uh, to create our sorting system. We're actually gonna take advantage of that little. Uh, little quirk of uh, comparators. So if you'll notice right now what we have is the magic number for getting just one signal out of here but no more is, um, whoops, let me get on the right one here, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 items. So if you have 22 stackable items, this doesn't apply like a sword, I think uh, there's actually charts online. It gets a little quirky when you have items that don't stack or you have an item like a sword, for example, well, obviously a sword doesn't stack, but if you have items that stack in groups of 16, it's a little different. Um, there are charts online, you could probably use that knowledge to create something similar to this so that you could sort those items as well. <coughs> But what we're doing is I've taken, because I'm in creative mode, you want to take an item that you know you're not going to pass into the system, and that's what you're going to use for your, I guess, your locking blocks to keep things from feeding into here. And you're going to put them in these 
blocks to the right. It doesn't matter if you have 18 here or here or 19. Uh, you, you don't want to have one. You don't. You want to make sure they're all filled out. But it doesn't matter where you have the 18. If it's the first section, if it's the last section, whatever. But you want to make sure that you've got 18, 19, 20, 21 blocks here. And then the very first block in the system is the item that you want to actually pass through. So what happens is when that item comes down the hopper chain and it's this hopper wants to suck it up if it matches this first block hey look it's cobblestone it'll suck it into here and you'll actually end up with that scenario and if you noticed it I immediately pulled it out of there and down to the bottom uh, the bottom hopper here and I'm not sure because of where I placed that yeah it's not actually going to feed through there but um, the thing that you didn't see because you couldn't because we were looking at hopper land there is when you put that one extra item in here you get an extra pulse of redstone you get just like we saw over there you get that second little redstone power here which because we're now powering that block it feeds into this repeater which then feeds into that block and turns off this torch just long enough so that the item that gets fed through here will get sucked down and through here and then fed right into the chest because of the way that we fed that in here through here I've noticed it's a little glitchy um, so you don't necessarily always get all of your items in here but for something like an automatic sorting system you're probably throwing enough of a quantity of items in here that if you have one that's not in the chest it's probably not going to break your heart uh, and if it is something you probably you know like any good redstone you want to make sure you have access back here in case you need to work on it but so that's uh, that is how the sorting system works and then this next little line of hoppers that I have over here is actually not hooked up to anything at all and that's just your your security blanket if you want to call it that so that anything that you throw into this system if it doesn't get sorted it'll get dropped into here so for example um, I have this set up to sort out the cobblestone but if I go over here and I throw some leather in here I don't want to throw too much in here because I don't feel like waiting for it it'll feed through here it can't get into here so it'll go straight down into here and get dumped into that chest where we can pick it up and because this isn't anything that's programmed or anything like that it doesn't matter what goes in there basically if it in this little scenario if it's not cobblestone it's going to get thrown into that chest so that's how that portion of it works <coughs> this side of it however this is uh, I guess a little more redstoney than that um, the way this works is whatever we toss into here is going to get pulled down through this hopper and dumped into this bottom dropper which no different than the uh, hoppers as we were looking at over there will kick out a signal as well through this comparator which in this case it's going to power this block and turn off this redstone torch what our redstone torch is doing is we've got a little hopper timer back here and the way these things work is you have two hoppers I don't know if you can see underneath there they're actually facing one another and you build those like this hold down shift and you can see the little feed is heading to the left and then we're going to hold down shift and we're going to feed another one into it so those two items are actually throwing back and forth into each other and if we throw an item in there you'll see it blinks in and out of there and then again the same taking advantage of that same thing we now have a, a, a miniature clock that run that's really su super simple to create and super simple to turn on and off so getting back into this when an item is in here it turns off this torch and lets this timer run which then sends power through this comparator and then we turn it into a full signal via the uh, repeaters here we don't have to use a repeater here um, I've got it set into there to feed the power into the blocks correctly and it just kinda makes this look a little cleaner uh, we do have to have this first one and if you'll notice I have these on no ticks but what we're doing then is we're using a redstone wiring system because this doesn't go up very far uh, the redstone the vertical wiring that we have here basically since we're sending power to this block which is going to make this tick and throw something up here this torch is off then goes back on so that ticks again this power goes tick and it throws it up into the into the, the hopper chain that we just explained so that's basically how this thing is working so again just to kind of show you in action if I throw cobblestone in here you can kind of see it doing its thing there this is on on solid because we've got a bunch of cobblestone that's getting fed into there and then getting fed up through the dropper system um, every now and then you hear those little ticks but it's it seems to not be a constant tick 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 which is a beautiful thing because that would be really obnoxious so as you can see now this is no longer lit up so we know okay there's no cobblestone in there none in there none in here and then if, we, if they made it up here then they're going through the system so at that point we can then now head over to this chest where we know we've sorted it and there's our 13 cobblestone waiting for us and I don't think because of the way that we did it I'm pretty sure 
there's nothing hanging out. Nope, there is. Okay, so there's a 14th item back there. So we're losing one in the sorting chain, but, you know, for the ease of just throwing whatever we want to in the chest, I'd call that an acceptable loss. Now, the thing that, uh, the reason I built this system is this little timer system back here is a wonderful little tool, and it works beautifully as long as your hopper chain's not more than, th or your dropper chain, rather, is not more than three or four items for your vertical, uh, for your item elevator. If you get more than that, the signal pulses that are going through here are not long enough. So your timer will run and do just like it was doing. And if you have a huge stack of items and it's only five of these things high, you might get most of them, but a lot of things are going to get stuck in here because your power that's uh, making this tick and giving you your pulses is going to stop before you get all your items out of your item elevator. So if that's the case and you have a, a longer chain like this, you need a longer timer in the back. So that's what we're doing over here. <coughs> this one's a little bit different. This part is all the same. Have a chest with a hopper underneath it that's then feeding into a dropper item elevator. We have uh, our vertical redstone wiring going up the side. And just like over here, we have a comparator that's pulling power out of this bottommost uh, dropper. That's pretty much where it stops being like that. <laughs> So what we're doing is uh, this little timer system that I have set up back here. This is actually a little weird clock that um, I actually learned about it from Monkey Farm, but um, I guess he gives credit to somebody named Ultimate Redstone is where he learned about it, so I will uh, thank him here as well. But I will do my best to explain how this thing's going to work. So similar to what we did over there, we're pulling our one tick of power when an item gets dropped in here through our comparator. But then we're going to convert that into a full uh, redstone signal via this uh, repeater. We want to have that on four ticks so that we get a long enough pulse out of here to get this thing started. Um, because we're using a repeater here, it's a one-way signal. It's going to go this way and then back over to here. And this comparator, obviously, it won't take power both ways, so it's a one-way signal. But uh, what happens is we're sending power over to this, com to this uh, comparator which then power throws power into this block and I'll explain this part in just a minute. Then it's going to send that power, that's going to we're basically feeding that power around through a comparator chain. If we did this with repeaters, we would just get a non-stop. It would just go on and on and on and on. I'm sorry, I'm making myself dizzy. I'm probably making you guys dizzy too. If we did it with uh, repeaters, we would just end up with a redstone signal that went around in a circle forever and it would never power itself out. But because comparators have this uh, will only power one block when we get over to here as long as this thing's not still pushing power out we get kind of a little our, our system gets shorted a little bit so our, our signal starts to die off so as we do this the and I, I've not really played around with how many of these is optimal for different heights uh, this seems to be pretty good this is the same amount that monkey farm used in his uh, his tutorial that he did on, um, I guess he was using lava as a method to power an auto furnace. So this, uh, he used this in the nether and it seemed to go up, I'm not sure how many blocks, but it was at least two times, I would guess, maybe three times as high as what I've got here. So this is probably good for most things that you're going to need. Um, but yeah, so anyway, our, our signal goes around and around and around in here and ultimately it will power itself out and it'll stop running. Now, what we have working over here is just a simple little clock. So in our vertical wiring chain, we're, we're off the side of this, we have a redstone torch here that, when it sends a signal out here, runs back around into this repeater, which goes back into this block. And because of the, and we have this on two ticks, so that we get a slow enough pulse and it doesn't burn itself out. Um, here, actually, I'll show you. It just does that. And as you can tell, that just ticks forever. We're turning it off using that that redstone torch right there and that's really kind of the key I guess to all of this because when we get the comparator chain that's uh, our timer I guess it's going around here as you can see this one feeds power into this block which then will turn off that red this redstone torch giving us that but as soon as these guys run out of their power it'll power back on and we'll get it, it'll stop so it won't just run forever like that it'll just run long enough to get our stuff in there so the way that works is if we throw in, let's say we're going to use half our stack of meat so we don't have to wait forever, they will start feeding out, and then we can watch this thing go. Okay, now you can see this is just powered on nonstop, but as soon as that sucker goes out, which hopefully won't take too long because it is going kind of quick, and again, it's kind of nice, we don't hear tick, tick, okay, here we go. So now we have to listen to that obnoxious ticking because of the clock, but 
if we keep watching this thing. And this is the part, this is where the magic is. So you can see the redstone heights pointed at my screen. <laughs> there you go. I don't know if you if you were if you noticed carefully in here, right here, you could actually watch that redstone signal kind of die. Let's actually I think that's kind of important to take note of. So let me I'm gonna throw one more item in here really fast so we can watch that. So if you watch this redstone, you can see it kind of start fading right there. And it just kind of slowly dies out, and then when it dies out, this torch goes back on. And three two, one. Wow, I'm good. I got lucky there. So there you go. So that torch goes back on, turns off the signal on all the items at this point. There's nothing hanging out in here. It's all up here in this last hopper because I don't have it actually going anywhere. So there we go. That is, in essence, that is the item sorter and the two different ways that you can create your item elevators. Actually, this is actually useful for a lot of different things. Uh, really both of these are, but if you need to send something up a long way, this is a really beautiful way of uh, of doing it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and build these things for you now. So um, I guess let's roll over here and we'll get started. Okay guys, so um, I think the first thing I will do is I will create the little sorting system for our chests. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to throw down a block here and we're going to put a redstone torch on the front of it. Then behind this we're going to throw down a repeater facing into it. Uh, at full power. Then behind that we're going to throw down a block. So that would be, I guess, uh, row number one. Um, actually, and then in front of here I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to throw down two blocks. That's uh, going to be the floor for our chest. Then I'm going to throw down a double chest there. So I guess that's really the start of uh, the next row. Um, then up here on our first block I'm going to throw another, I'm going to throw two more blocks here. Then above that, I'm going to throw redstone dust. And then up here, I'm going to throw another redstone dust so we get that little line there. Then I'm going to throw a comparator behind that. Um, on the front of this chest, I'm going to throw an inverted step. That way we can still open the chest up. And then I'm going to actually, just temporarily, I'm going to throw a block behind that one. Now, um, actually I forgot a level. We are going to, I'm going to hold down shift so that I can do this, and I'm going to place a comparator facing the chest. Or a comparator, god, sorry guys, a hopper facing the chest, so you get the little nipple thing facing in. Then above that, I'm going to throw down another hopper actually facing the block. That's important. Do not have it facing into this hopper or it will just feed stuff straight down. Uh, if you have it facing into that block, then I'm going to take that block out. But if you have it facing this direction, if it can't do anything then it will just ignore it. If it can do something then it will go ahead and pass it down. Okay. So then on our next level up I'm going to place a block there and I'm going to place another block here temporarily and another one here and here and that's only so that I can get a hopper facing this direction. Okay so I'm going to put another hopper down here and I'm going to break out that block, that block, and that block. And believe it or not that is it kids it is that simple. So for our hopper chain, what we would do is, I can you can do it down from on the ground. If you hold down shift, you can click that. And I'm going to drop two more over here, just so that we'll be able to recreate this stuff. But uh, you can make that as long as you would like it to, or if you just want to be able to throw things at the floor and get them in there, you don't have to do this at all. So that is going to be that portion. So then the next thing that I'm going to do so it's, I mean, so that's really, I guess just to, to stop it there, that's it. If you want just a one single sorter, you got it. That's all the more you got to do other than programming your hopper. So let's go ahead and do that actually before I start the rest of it. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and use, uh, I guess I'll go with uh, sponge because that's a good simple block that you never find in the game. So I'm going to hold them to shift click and grab a whole stack. Then the first thing I'm going to do is break this down. There's 16, 17, 18. So I'm going to throw 18 here. Then 1, 2, 3. And then I'm going to throw whatever it is that I want to sort. In this case, I'll say leather. I'm going to throw it right there. And that is now programmed so that leather will get dumped into this chest. So we'll go ahead and we'll give it a little test. I'll throw, you know, grab half a stack. We'll throw it in there. You can actually see it counting down. You see that power ticking there, so that's a good sign. There's only one left in there. There's one left in here. Like I said, we do lose one item, but then there's a leather. So that does pass down correctly. Now if I throw down another item in here, like let's say this cobblestone, it'll feed out of this, 
but if you notice there's no signal coming out of there and it's just ending up in this last hopper right there so I don't think it went down anywhere it shouldn't have Oops. things are hard to tricky to click on sometimes so what we want to do now because we've got the uh, we have our sorter in here you can create as many of these as you want it is modular if you want to create 45 of these things hey man knock yourself out um, you can put them right next to one another. The trick to that is is creating a trapped chest and you can create those if you don't already know how. If you have a tripwire hook and you have a normal chest well, ah, shoot. Here, let me show you here really fast. Um, if I throw the tripwire hook in... it won't let me do it in there. Okay. Well, suffice it to say, if you do this with your chest <laughs> and a tripwire hook, it will create a trapped chest. That's probably enough of a tutorial for you guys. You can look it up on Google if you really don't know how to do that. Um, so there we go. I'm going to just go ahead and use the cheaty way of doing it and I'm going to grab a trapped chest out of here. But by grabbing a trapped chest you can place it right next to your normal chest and the texture, your texture pack, if it's done properly, they should be identical so you can't tell the difference. It just looks like you have two chests, two double chests right next to one another. So then, just for consistency sake, I'm going to go ahead and shift click and I'm going to make this look the same as that one does. Then, this is my dump chest, by the way, so I'm going to hold down shift here so that I'm facing that hopper into our chest. And then I'm going to vertically wire, or not vertically wire, I'm too much redstone. I'm going to vertically place those two. So what we have now, that's you only want to have this one pointing down like that on the very, very end of your hopper chain. If you put this anywhere else in the middle of your chain, it does not matter what you do past here. Everything is going to get dumped into that chest. So now, if we place a half a stack of leather there and then we throw some sponge here, as soon as it gets through that leather, it starts feeding the sponge. So what we'll end up with is our... Uh, Sponge. Oh, I forgot I had sponge in there as a block. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so our leather ends up there, and then I'll throw some cobblestone in here. And the cobblestone will not be in this first chest because we have it programmed wrong. Okay, what did I do here? Okay, guys, sorry about that. I figured out what I did wrong there. Um, when I threw my sponge into the system, I kind of threw this all out of whack because I have I forgot I used sponge as my non-identifier block, and then uh, the reason my cobblestone actually went down into the chest is because once the sponge went through there, it started sucking this stuff out, and I had this all out of there, and it was just un to totally unprogrammed. So let's try that again. If I throw in some leather there, and I throw in some cobblestone here, we will end up this time, I feel remotely confident, <laughs> only leather in this chest and our cobblestone ends up in our dump chest there, which is what we wanted. So there you go. That is the basic sorting system for you. Um, I guess at this point I will go ahead and I will build the uh, item elevator that we've got working there. Okay guys, so um, I think what I'm going to do when, as we build the item elevator you don't really have to put this separator in between your chests. I prefer to do that just because I think it makes it a little easier to tell which chest is the dump chest versus where your actual sorting system starts. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here. And actually because of uh, how this is going to have to empty out to get into the item elevator, um, we don't need a block in our, or actually we can't have a block underneath the back of that, uh, that chest. So that part obviously is pretty straightforward. I'm going to go ahead and get some droppers in here. So the first thing we'll need to do in getting the item elevator built is we got to throw the first dropper down there. Um, and we'll throw a hopper pointing into that from that chest. So anything that we throw into here, we'll, well, yeah, anything we get dropped into there, whoop, there you go, get spit out of the dropper. So, okay, um, yeah, but like I was saying, if you wanted to, technically you could build this one block over. Actually, hmm, you know, you might not be able to. I didn't think that there would be any interference here, but I think your dropper might actually get, uh, get, be bumping into this redstone torch. I'm not sure what that would do to it. So, anyway, um, yeah, try and keep a, a little bit of separation in there, um, just to be on the safe side. And then, uh, there we go, just to make that pretty from the front. Tadam, isn't that cool? Okay, so <coughs> next thing we got to do, I'm actually going to knock that out of there just to make this a little easier for me. Hold down Shift and jump and jump. 
and then I'm going to hold down shift again to replace the hopper that I just broke. So there's our little basic item elevator there. Yeah, that's good. I'm glad the uh, daylight decided to come back out for us now. Um, yeah, incidentally, I've got this, uh, where is it, this little guy over here, a little daylight sensor with a command block so that if it gets too dark, it does become daylight. But anyway, that has nothing to do with this. So, all right, um, that's really it in a nutshell to get the item elevator in place. Uh, the only thing that we're missing from it now, obviously, is the timer. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead, I'm actually going to build, even though this is just a little short system, I'm going to build the more complex timer, which would be this one, even though it's not too bad. This one, like I said, I think it's pretty straightforward. You're just going to bring a comparator off to the back of the hopper that goes into a block with a redstone torch on it. Two hoppers facing each other. One of one item in the hopper, in either hopper, it doesn't make a difference which one. <coughs> Another comparator coming off of the hopper that points back towards your vertical wiring, uh, and then two uh, redstone repeaters that go into a block that powers your uh, redstone vertical wiring. So that's really all that's uh, entailed in this little tiny timer. But uh, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do this little more compl complicated one, just because I think uh, even though we don't really need it... Okay guys. Um, I'm actually re-recording this, so hopefully I'm not uh, leaving anything out. I uh, just realized that I kind of goofed up when I was building the timer on this. So anyway, here we have our um, item elevator that's going to take items out of the chest and into the item elevator and then send them up to our hopper chain. Um, so as far as a timer that's on this, I'm actually, even though we don't need it, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to build the more complicated timer that we've got over here. Um, again, if I've already said that, I apologize. But um, yeah, I just I think this is probably going to be a little more complex, and I want to make sure that uh, people know how to build that one. So um, actually, I think I am repeating myself there. So anyway, um, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to get our vertical redstone wiring in here, which is pretty basic. So then we'll do that. You hear the one little tick? That's okay. Um, I think the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build our clock. So to do that, we're going to put a redstone torch here, and I'm going to throw down a repeater here and set that one to two ticks. Then I'm going to run my redstone here, and that gives us a non-stop clock. So then the next thing I want to do is I'm actually from the corner of this redstone here, I'm going to skip a block, and I'm going to throw down a block here, and I'm going to throw a redstone torch on it. And that's going to lock this clock so that it'll stop. And that's actually, this is a very important, this is our key block that's going to make this thing work and turn on and off. So uh, everything's going to kind of feed into that. So then off the back of this dropper right here, we're going to throw down a comparator. We're going to throw down a redstone repeater on four ticks here. And that's actually going to be uh, so that our redstone signal will continue around. Then I'm going to throw down two dots of redstone here. And then a comparator feeding into this block. Then if I'm doing this right now, I'll check it before I, uh, <laughs> before I continue. We're going to do three comparators here, feeding into a block. Then we're going to do two comparators, feeding into that block. And then we're going to throw down our last three comparators here, and I think that gives us everything that we need. Let me make sure that I have my comparators facing the right direction. That's actually uh, the mistake that I made last time I did this. Oh, yep, see I'm doing it again. Or no, I'm not. That's fine. That's good. That's actually perfect. So okay, so what will happen is our signal will come out of this bottom dropper, feed here, and because it can't go into our comparator chain this direction because they're monodirectional or one directional, it's going to hang a left here and go into this block, which is again then going to turn this torch off, effectively doing that and turning the timer on so that our items will get passed up here no matter how long it is. Then the signal is going to go through these comparators and back around the chain. Um, that will continue as soon as this is no longer powering it to keep feeding them power then they'll start to dwindle and like we noticed before we can watch that uh, kind of fade out so let's go ahead and give this a test whoops um, let me pull my items back out of here because if you didn't know yes I've already tried this once and that's how I knew that I did something wrong interestingly it still actually did work um, when even when I messed it up but it's because the height of this uh, dropper elevator is so small and I didn't want to show you something that wasn't going to work for you guys. So anyway, let's give it another whirl. I'm going to throw, yeah, I'll throw half my leather in there and then we should be able to sit here and watch it. Yep, and you can hear it tick 
and you can watch it and then as soon as that goes out we'll know that it's done Yep, and then these will slowly fade you also know that it's actually sorting over here because you can see this stuff pulsing which you know, we could see when uh, if you go back and rewatch this you'll notice it but there we go that goes out so there we go and we should be able to go over here there should be one leather back here yep that we get lost in the translation and then there's the rest of it there so I'll leave that stuff and then we can any other block that we throw in here should end up in the other chest that just drops straight down so we'll go ahead and do this and there we go we're now setting all those blocks up we're setting the stakes first and then obviously the cobblestone will go uh, you know that it's actually working and it's not throwing them in this sorted chest because there's no flickering here with this redstone going on and off as items get sorted so if we hang out here and watch we'll again we'll know as soon as that goes out that all of our items yep so all of our items should now be since those are ticking all of our items should be in this chest so if we look in this first chest we should see only the leather which we do and I'm going to take that back now and then in this one there's all our cobblestone and all our stakes and because this one doesn't have any redstone or anything goofy like that going on nothing is going to get stuck in the uh, hopper chain here so anything that goes in the miscellaneous chest you can be assured is actually all there so that's really it um, it's up to you guys how you want to hide it uh, like I said you can actually push this probably one block over I'm not sure let's actually find out if there's any uh, yeah, I don't know if that's going to lock that's probably going to lock that hopper so it's probably best just to leave this uh, space in there for the extra block it's probably worth it just to make sure that you uh, don't encounter any problems with this but um, yeah that's pretty much it you can pretty this thing up however you want to at that point uh, obviously it's easy enough to hide behind a wall and if you want to see some other ideas on how to deal with that thing and how else you can use it please do check out the uh, my let's play series um, in the meantime hopefully this was of some help to you guys and you can build these in your own world um, again this is uh, it's all pretty this one's in particularly simple or in particularly in particular is simple so if you have uh, just a small little, little uh, item hopper elevator I would seriously recommend just trying this first to make you know double check it to make sure it works but it is a lot easier well I guess a lot easier it's pretty simple to build neither one of them's really you know doesn't, not like it requires a redstone degree or anything like that but um, yeah so anyway hopefully that was helpful like this uh, if you liked the video and uh, I would appreciate that uh, subscribe if you've not subscribed and I will catch you guys next time